All right, bros. So first off, let me just say I'm sorry for uh, pushing this video off so long. I've been really busy. We've been going to like the meet Pan and Junction just passed. That video is going to be coming out in the next couple days. Um, just been crazy busy. So I figured today I got some time. Just got my hair cut. Let's do the Rotary Miata video. Um, basically, what's what? Let me explain what has been done. We have done uh, the trans mount, the motor mounts, plugged up most of the wires. Um, ran the wires into the car, ran the wires out of the car to the coil pack, plugged up most of the wires on the engine, uh, also hooked up the intake just to make sure it fits the mass airflow so we can use the stock one. Um, problems we ran into when the motor mounts were put in after they were welded, they like warped or they were just wrong and it was uh, basically like the motor was sitting crazy uneven, so I had to chop it, modify it. Now the motor's sitting flat. Trans mount, uh, had a couple issues with it, but finally got it finished. I actually had a video of me making that, but when I broke my phone, I lost all the videos, so I could never make that video, but I'm gonna show you today uh, what it looks like and stuff under the car. The car is actually sitting on the ground right now on the front ends on tires and like not to the car because there's no subframe, and then the rear is all fine, just stock. Uh, we need to basically this weekend or this week, we need to wire up the starter so we, and the ignition so we can crank it over. Once we get there, we can wire up the fuel pump, which will be easy, and then wire up the alternator, like I already said, make sure all our wires connection, make sure our uh, spark plug wires are in the right firing order, you know, all the just little stupid things that if you screw up, it ain't gonna run. Basically, the hard work's done. The hardest part really is, guys, I'm not gonna lie, uh, wiring an engine like in a V8 when, or like an SR when you get the whole harness It's like you kind of just throw it in there, but the, the weird thing is that's what we expected with this but with the rotary um, Like that we needed to take the whole body harness out and the engine harness because the engine harness had everything uh, Besides the coil packs the coil packs and stuff were actually a part of the body harness So it made like this swap really hard and I, I'm still not a hundred percent sure if we're really really gonna be able to finish it um, I mean, we're going to try to wire everything up. We're going to do everything we possibly can. I mean, I, I there's no doubt in my mind we can't, but it's definitely going to take some real time to doing the wires. But like I said, guys, we've done pretty much everything besides the wiring. Uh, the drive shaft will be easy. We can use the stock RX-7 drive shaft with a little adapter plate. And axles and all that's the same. Use the Miata diff. The motor's in. The trans is in. It's all lined up. Everything's looking great. Let me just show you the car and with uh, the camera the other way and show you all the stuff that I've gotten done and I just explained to you. So we'll start right here as you can see. Transmission's mounted, it's perfectly centered. It's all in there. Motor's in there and it, see it's just sitting on tires because there's no subframe besides these pieces. And then the rear is all together. Got the intake all in there, it fits fine. We can use the stock one. Got some of the wires hooked up, honestly most of the wires and then it's under here all this is hooked up all the wires back there and then it runs into there got the stock boot on there and the ecu is right in behind there and then see that's the engine harness that would have been easy you know i mean that would have, that's it everything plugs in you would start it right on a regular car but on the rotary okay you have these coil packs and the wires only like four of them are in here or whatever to monitor these coil packs and send signals from the fuse box Oops. Uh, I don't know much about rotaries, but I know that they're in there and we found them. But we were just going to split it all apart and take the wires we need it or rewire this. But it's actually really hard to get the wires out of there because they run like the ground and the powers all through there. I don't know. So we were just going to get it running like this by taking the whole engine harness or body harness out and putting the whole body harness in there, which kind of worked because we're going to be able to plug up the stock RX-7 dash and that'll give us the RX-7 tachometer and everything because it revs the 9000, which will be cool. But after we get it running, we'd like to go all back through and get rid of the wires we don't need, but we don't want to go cutting things out and then it doesn't run because of that. So we're leaving everything in there just like that and we're gonna run it like this. But the motor's in guys, I mean, it's mounted. I got it, I, this is how I had to modify it. We gotta trim this piece off. But see, it's bolted up, bolted up, it's bolted up under there. I mean, it's, oops, I'm not really gonna push hard, but I mean, it's, it's in there, it's dead sturdy. And then the trans mount, I'd have to jack it up to show you, but let me see if I can get under that for you guys. Yeah, see right there? It's actually got like rubber bushings and everything. I made that myself. It took like all night. 
but it turned out really good. And then as you can see, for the subframe, what we're gonna have to do, see we had to chop it because it usually would go right where this oil pan was and the rotary sat too low because that's how we made it and it had to sit and the hood would fit. We could have probably made it a little bit higher, but it's okay. So basically what we did was we chopped it there and the piece is right here and for the steering rack. And what we're gonna do is just move the steering rack right here in front of the engine and then weld some bars and some flat metal and stuff right there. Can't really explain it right now, but that's what we're gonna do. And then once we do that, it'll be able to steer and roll and that'll help this build a little bit because if we need to push it out in my yard to get the RX-7 in or the 240 and even though we have that space, but it'll just be better. So we're gonna do that next. We're gonna do the subframe, get this thing on four wheels and then we're gonna start really cracking down on the wiring. But the subframe should only be like a one day uh, process. And if you guys really wanna see us build that, just leave me some comments and let me know because we will. And you know, we'd like to do that. We like to record everything we do, but everything's pretty much ready. Like the radiator hoses, like in the stock radiator over there, we can just weld up some mounts for the oil cooler. Just weld up some mounts, it'll sit like that. That kind of stuff is really not gonna be hard. Like I said, the thing that's giving us the most issue right now is this wiring harness, guys. Like. I'm telling you, it it is harder than me and Daquan ever imagined. The engine harness would have been butter. It would have went right in, ECU plugged out, could have wired up the starter, cranked it over, and it would have fired up with the fuel pump and everything. It would have been great. But no, Mazda had to put the coil packs in the body harness. We had to pull the whole entire harness out of the RX-7. It was, it was a struggle, but we didn't cut nothing. We didn't break nothing. We did it all right. So we should be good. So that's pretty much the update on the RX-7 rx7 slash mx5 rotary mx5 mx7 whatever you want to call it um it's looking good guys we really have made progress sorry i haven't recorded it the one thing i did record i actually lost it uh yeah i guess i can give you like a little update on the 240 and the rx7 and some plans for that well you guys know the plans for the 240 but everyone's always asking about the rx7 so i'll run out there and talk about that a little bit so basically the rx7 was like the car that me and daquan learned to drift on you can see like this is a dent from Walt having a shopping cart. It's all pulled apart right now. It's got obviously no motor in it, it's all stripped. But it's clean so I decided to keep it. He was just gonna give it away so I told him to give it to me and I'll definitely build that thing. But uh, it's pretty clean, it's got like no rust. Uh, the diffs are pretty strong in these. So definitely wanna put a V8 in this one, but yeah. Basically, my plans for the RX-7 really would be a Junkyard V8, like a Vortec 5.3, and I would do the right trans, I'd do a T56, and I would buy all the mounts from like uh, CX Racing or Zinke, or Siki, I think, I don't know, I can never pronounce that. And But the thing is, guys, I don't make that much money, so I can't just go like, oh, I wanna do a V8 swap for you guys and do it. I really, I just can't, I can't afford it. And I wanna build the 240 first. But the plan for that thing is, maybe next winter or even this summer to uh to build it because it'll probably i'm gonna be honest with you i think we could do it for four grand and i already have the car so it wouldn't be too bad i mean that's a lot of money but it's definitely something i could save up but like i said 240 is definitely getting all the loving first uh what i want to do the 240 is basically it's, it is my drift car and i want to do the i want it to look good too i want the over fenders from origin it'll be 55 millimeter rear over fenders the fronts are going to be 35s from origin and then i'm going to do the type 2 body kit aggressive style i think it's called for a body kit and that'll all be coming soon but like i've said before guys i'm really pushing to save for a camera and it's it's really killing me i haven't been able to buy any parts i've been saving like crazy the camera i'm getting the canyon t6i and the macbook pro it's it's a lot of money, but it's looking good. Hopefully gonna be getting it soon and then we can start modding the 240 again. But if you guys ever like wanna support me in any way, I don't really support the whole channel support thing where you just donate money. I don't really wouldn't like that to ask for money and I, that's why I don't even have it set up so you guys can't do that. But we do sell stickers and the website's in the description and that makes me feel good because if you guys buy something that's directly supporting me and then I can send you a sticker which has garage sideways on it and that's awesome. I would love to see cars with our stickers. I only have like literally like 
20 left. So if you guys see this video and you like buy them all from this video to help me out or whatever, that'd be freaking awesome. And then I can go ahead and order some more. And then if you guys want to buy more or whoever, someone that doesn't have one, buy them. I'll definitely do that. So do me a favor. Uh, just be a little patient. We're really cracking down on this rotary Miata. It is tough. But check out the website for me. If you want any stickers, definitely buy them. Uh, they're honestly pretty sweet they're good quality it's not like bad stickers or anything but we're gonna have an update video on this rotary Miata. actually this is the update video we're gonna have a video of us doing the subframe within the next couple days me and daquan are definitely gonna get get together and do this so thanks for watching this video guys i hope you enjoyed this update sorry we haven't been posting that many videos on it we've just been really busy and we'll catch you in the next rotary update video and also i can tell you that this month is gonna have a lot of drift videos so stay tuned